Okay, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, everybody, and welcome to our Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. show and tell, the longest-running electronic show and tell in the world. We've been doing this for like a decade or so, uh, every Wednesday at 7.30. And uh, we're here again because we don't stop, never stop. Me, Miss Lady Ada, with me, Mr. Lady Ada, here at the Adafruit Factory in downtown Manhattan where we broadcast live uh, while the machines are asleep. Um, but right now we're going to check in with all sorts of folks from the Adafruit team as well as from around the world. We'll start off with some Adafruit folks and then we'll get to other people who will be out of here at 7.50. That's right. And if you are one of the folks that are joining, um, you're in the green room and uh, just stay there. We'll get to you. We're going to get to some Adafruit folks and then we'll get to the rest of the folks that are waiting. If we're full, just keep trying because folks will drop out. Let's start with Melissa. Okay. Melissa, hello. What are you up to? Hi. Okay, so I am up to working on a getting TensorFlow running on the Raspberry Pi 4. So I have a little camera attached to with a screen, and it's able to detect stuff. Like if I were to point it at, oh, let me. I don't have enough hands here. <laughs> okay. So if I, you can't see that, can you? Okay, uh, you can kind of see it reflecting, but like I'm pointing it at this coffee mug and it's showing yeah. coffee mug. Let me just hold it like this. Now the coffee uh, mug is front. I think ah. you get the point, so you can point it at yeah, stuff. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you get the point. And then so we, you can point at stuff, it recognizes it, and it displays the text. Exactly, and if you plug in headphones into it, then it'll actually speak out what it's seeing. Yeah, we'll have a demo. As long as you don't have yeah, we'll have a demo and we'll show it live during Ask an Engineer as well. We also put one up on YouTube because I ran into the same problem where I didn't have enough hands, so I had to get a tripod to hold the things up in front of the, the device. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. All right. All thanks right. Well, thanks so much. And thanks for doing that guide because it's really hard to do all this TensorFlow stuff. Okay. Yeah. Next up, let's check in with Brian. Howdy. Hello. So uh, I was bored, and so I decided to build the internet. So here is my internet. You can see it's an internet because it's a box with an LED on it. But the LED isn't on, so that means my internet's not working. Um, so I hired a sniffer dog. This is Fred, the sniffer dog. He's going to sniff around, sniff, 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 try and find why the internet's not working. Is he going to find it? Oh, there it is. I found it. Problem solved. Amazing. How did he do that? Uh, so this is got I got the TLV um, magnetic sensor inside here hooked up to a metro with just a LED stuck in the box, and this is a little fidget magnet that's like a dog butt. You yeah. Can just stick on, and so when I put it on here, I find the spot where the TLV is stuck to the top of the box, and turn on the light. So you could use this to make uh, I don't know secret passageway opening statues or who knows what. There you go. I think you can use that with a lot of uh, tabletop games. People are yep. adding electronics to those. Sure. Cool. Absolutely. Right. Thanks, Brian. All right. Nice work. And people are excited to check out this new magnetic sensor. Very fun. So, want to go to JP? Yep. Next up, JP. Hey, guys. Uh, so, I wanted to show you a couple things uh, here. It's a. Uh, one thing that people may not know yet is that our um, monster mask can be separated out and then we can use wires to reconnect uh, the boards to each other. So I've got our uh, one of our eyeball demos running on here. Oh, uh, big eyes. Yeah, so so I snipped the, the little uh, connection in the middle. We only lose the little boop nose um, uh, capacitive touchpad, but otherwise we retain all functionality. So I can put some eyes on here. Uh, and what I've done is I've, I've made some custom eyes that are super big and fish-like because I'm going to show on my live stream tomorrow and write a guide on creating one of these uh, sort of Halloween mask, monster mask, head cover type of uh, masks that you see where you can see out of the mouth or the nose and then there's like chickens and pigs and uh, uh, dragons and sharks, and in this case, a fish that have big eyes up on, on your head. So it's a really nice one for adding the monster mask eyes to because it doesn't obscure your vision at all. You'll still see out the nose here. Uh, and then you can see I've, I've started adding in one of our uh, nice 40 millimeter plastic lenses in there. So you'll see if I place my um, 
TFT screen from the monster mask in here, we get a really mm -hmm. nice fish eye. That fish can eye. And that'll really freak people out at, uh, at Halloween, hopefully, or year round. I encourage you to wear it year round, really. Yeah. I think this is great for like bar mitzvahs. It's weddings yeah. bar and bat mitzvahs always need a frank the yeah. fish character walking around and parades upset. yep so that'll be on my show tomorrow at uh, and uh <laughs> and i can't wait to see what weird stuff people come up with using. right it's you're keeping it weird here at eight if thanks for thanks for the fish mask if people have other suggestions for cool masks of course yeah. uh watch jp's show you're back you're streaming live uh on thursdays right and on. uh suggest other cool weird stuff for yeah. uh, JP to stick his head into. And he'll do it. Yeah. He's very suggestible. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, next up, let's check out Nan and Pedro who have, who have definitely avoided uh, the storm. They're doing great, they're dry, not flooded. And uh, they, they, you don't have the show today, but next week you'll be back. If you get a good a, a preemptive cancellation, just in case. Yes, yeah. we are very prepared. We have the hurricane shutter still up. But uh, we will take those down maybe in the coming weeks because no, there's Friday. more storms coming. Know, we don't so know. The good news you said when you went to Disney World, it was kind of empty. It was. Yeah, kind so of that's empty. actually what we did. We put up all their shutters and went to Disney because you know everybody's going to be gone. It was amazing. We built some Mickey hats. Yeah, that so we've never done before. Right. So these are just kind of your standard classic Mickey ears that you can get at Disney boring. World, Disneyland. They're kind of boring, right? Boring. You need to add some lights. So got to make them interesting. Yeah, so you got these really awesome neon like Neo Pixel uh, strips in the shop a couple weeks ago. And first thing that I thought of was, whoa, let's get these awesome ears just because of the way that the side lit looks on them. And they look so smooth. You can see them compared to the regular side lit. I think these are like the medium density ones. You see it yeah. has like a marquee effect. And these Which are is okay, but those are, they got this very nice smooth, yeah. smooth look. Yeah, they're like. They're like EL wire, but mm -hmm. uh, the brightness of just neon lights. So and really durable. Really so you know that those ears will last for generations. Yeah. So it, of course it was raining the whole time we were there and they survived because of the silicone sheathing on it. And the thing that we added to these was uh, interactivity. So when you like do a little head shake there, you can see it has a little sparkle animation. So all okay. it is is just the uh, tilt switch on there. And the cool thing about it is we programmed it all in the uh, maker.me code. A portion of the site and it has these really cool abilities to like draw out your uh, schematic for you so i knew like exactly how to wire everything up uh really cool we did a whole video on it that we'll uh, play a little bit later but super cool um way to spice up your mickey ears and add like interactivity to them maker mickey all right yes. well maker Mickey's. <laughs> they, look, they look amazing congratulations on avoiding dorian and uh taking advantage of of an empty Disney World, uh, great ears, and then check back next week. You'll have your show back, and you'll be doing lots more projects. Yeah, all the blog and, posts about tomorrow, and, and yeah, uh, check in next week for a full hour of a bunch of other three printing stuff. Sweet. <laughs> all right, next up, let's go to Pet Your Dragon. What's what? Whoa, what's oh. going on? Hello, hey guy. I'm sorry, guys, but that fit that thing with the fish eyes that is just too weird. You. <laughs> Weird stuff like we that. gotta take it. We gotta bring it down. I gotta, I gotta get boring, bland electronics. Yeah, exactly. All right, so well, what's, what's what, I'm trying, here? what I'm trying here. This is not an Instagram filter. You know, there's that the the Instagram eyes thing is is going around. Uh, yeah. Popular now. This is this is in real life. This is happening. Um, revisiting a project I showed uh, here two or three weeks ago using the Pepper's Ghost effect, where you have a a screen and a, a a reflective surface and you can kind of project uh, graphics on top of real world things, in this case a face. Um, but I have been using a, a piece of acrylic before and I went looking and it's like, what is the thing to use for Pepper's Ghost? And they say people who do haunts and all that, uh, either acetate, which needs a frame, which you would see, or tempered glass. And it's like, where where am I going to go? I have to call all these glass you know, shops around town to find tempered glass. And I don't know where I'm going to find a piece of tempered glass that's about the. Anyway, these phone screen protectors, um, they're super cheap. You get like three of them for a few bucks. And um, that's perfect. they look perfect. It is the perfect surface for, for the, a, a small scale Pepper's Ghost effect. Okay. Um, so, anyway, there is the monster mask uh, up under the brim of a hat. And uh, now, with you know, some light on it, you can see the the screen protector. 
Yeah. But, um, yeah. When, once you get that, you know, with kind of low ambient light, the the, the glass just kind of disappears. I bet at night this is gonna amazing because it'll, it'll just pop so much. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want you know complete darkness, but definitely uh, subdued light lighting. Okay. And, uh, once I move, I, I need to move the board. Is actually I'm gonna put it on top of the hat and put some holes there. Once you get the distance just right, um, you'll get the, because right now you can see my eyes out the side. Yeah. If you get the distance right, you, you get the parallax for free. It will yeah. line up perfectly. Huh. And, um, oh, because the, the, the mask eyes have to be the same distance as your eyes from the tempered glass, because that way you get the. Yeah, then the, you'll get a, a very right, right. illusion, right? So mm. I just, I need like an extra half inch, and if I just move, Move it up to this side with, with holes in there. Uh, that should do it. It'll be uh, really disturbing. Well, it's super disturbing already. Uh, yeah, we you had a you had an, a, a video on Twitter, and I was just like, wow. I mean, it's it's amazing how good it looks, and the bright IPS TFTs just like you know, and, and the fact that it's it, the contrast is so good that the black light doesn't light up your you know doesn't light up your eye. Yeah, yeah. The older, the older screens had a lot of, um, you know, the the contrast was for. I did go, I did go in here with some puff paint and uh, blocked the perimeter, so there's mm. no uh, light bleeding. But once I move the board up top, anyway, yeah, you know, it's going to be blocking that, you know, regardless. So this was this was my my beta test, and uh, I'll I'll do a more carefully planned one. Uh, I should have a a guide ready on how to do this uh, by the weekend, I think. Okay, well, the peanut gallery says it's brilliant and it's so freakishly awesome. This is, this is weird, you're definitely keeping it weird. Good work there. Oh, and I, you've got that swirly eyes, which is an effect that the, the monster mask can do that we haven't used that much yet. So this will be a good guide to show off the rotational effects. Yeah, yeah, creepy uh, showcase kind of thing. Okay. Excellent, thank you. All right, sweet, All right, nice work. Right, go so kill some tunes. Next up, we're gonna go to Nick. All right, Nick. Hey, Hello. Hello. How are you? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I've I'm gonna go as fast as I possibly can because sadly I normally can't make this time slot. Okay. So I have been in love with your Circuit Playground Express and whatnot. It's kind of what got me into all this because I'm normally a software developer. Yeah, thank so you. So what I've been doing here is using these little um, their U clips and then pinching them together and they make perfect connectors to connect in to anything. And I've made a bunch of fun little projects. So I have this, which is gonna be a wearable little robot necklace. Um, he's gonna interact and talk and he's got hands. Oh, neat. Um, and I've done the same and I've posted this. Um, so I've made, uh, this is using the Cricut, uh, but I actually borrowed. So the great thing about the connectors is there's no soldering, it's easy connector. I can take them off so I can build. So I have this little cute robot project um, and I can just take things off. Uh, I also made a four player one dimensional pong game. Again, same thing. So everything here is just screwed on. So the great part is if I wanna take anything off and just reuse it, um, I totally can. Um, and I've got a bunch of other projects, but I'm sure you've got time to uh, pass on to other people. Yeah. Well, well these are amazing are projects. You willing, are you willing to uh, come back during another week or send some photos and more information about it? Um, I actually have. I have a YouTube channel where I post the builds for all of this, and um, you guys have retweeted and whatnot, but I'm happy to write guides uh, on your yeah. Learn Adafruit if you would like to invite me. Yeah, email PT at Adafruit um, for that, uh, and then also email support at Adafruit, and we're, we'll give you a sticker. Okay, I will so take this your, your banner. All right. You said about, e email Pete or PT? Oh, PT at uh, okay. Adafruit.com. Well, thank you so and much. Then, yeah, then you get a sticker too. But you okay. got email support for the sticker. Wonderful builds. Thank you, Nick. Good they stuff. look awesome. And I love your 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 witty techniques on avoiding soldering. It's, yeah. It's good <laughs> stuff. It's like right. a dynamically linked libraries, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna go to JMK. JMK. And then we have still Bedwell. three more people after JMK. So okay. if everyone can keep it to one minute or so, one and a half minutes, we can get to everybody tonight. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, hi, 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 JMK. Hello. So I so I was a uh, I was uh, um, going through my drawers and things and cleaning out, uh, and um, and and we and um, we were cleaning out some of the stuff in there, and I found my Pi Portal, which was lost for so long. Yeah. Yeah, and I uh, thought, and I wanted to do some sort of project on it. So since 
um, probably a few weeks ago, two or three, I thought it'd be cool if I made, if I, I think I put JMKOS on it before, but it was all text-based. So you had to use like um, Putty or uh, the Moo or something to go on and type on it. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I actually made like a, a kind of a touch OS thing on it? So what's cool about this is you can just run any Python file on it. So I, um, on, I uh, like any uh, uh, code.py file, you could have like tons of different projects all on the same device. Just uh, you can swap between them interactively. So I'm just gonna go over. Uh, so okay. here's the chaos, it's happening, go. Yeah. So before I uh, show you anything here, I'm just gonna reset it and show you what it looks like to boot up. Okay. So um, it shows the uh, main bitmap. Oh, that's nice. It'll flash the boot Ooh. up. It, I don't have any delay between uh, starting up and shutting down, so that's why it doesn't, it goes by pretty quickly. So then, fast. You know, the main interface uh, has a um, two buttons. Uh, hold on, let me just get the glare out of the way. So you can press this button, which is brightness. Uh, okay. A little brightness toggle. And if you press go, uh, right, it's, it's white just because my, uh, my uh, paint program is being annoying and isn't actually making anything transparent. But um, so there's four kind of app things on here. This is shut down. This is a uh, terminal kind of thing. So using a using a uh, again like a, a a serial interface, some way to like a some way to interface it uh, a a com port on the on a computer connected. USB, you can type in like a few simple commands, very similar to the, uh, like this pretty much the same thing as the JMKOS without the GUI. Then this is a clock, which actually does internet time, but um, I actually don't have the Wi-Fi network hooked up right now. So what I want to show you first is the settings. So I've got a few things here. I've got brightness, which is the same as this, wallpaper mm -hmm. storage. And, and uh, so it's, so as, so if you look at this right now, you'll think that um, it, it's not, the reason it has like nothing really on it that's useful is because you're not, it's it's uh, for running other things. So what I'm quickly going to do is, if you could, uh, I'm going to go and go um, share my screen. So uh, could, could you uh, bring that up for me? or, or uh... Yeah, as soon as you share your screen, I'll, I'll add it. Okay, so hold on. Okay, so um, great. So this is a... Uh, my uh, TerraTerm window, which is basically how I uh, do a serial interface with the device. So I'm just going to open up the terminal here, and you'll see it pops up this uh, terminal window, which is pretty much the same thing as uh, uh, the original JMKOS before I uh, did any TouchOS stuff. So as you can see, if I type here, it appears the you know on the screen uh, uh, because it's a serial interface. So if you type, if I type help. You can see I got a few basic commands. Oh, hold on. Okay, so uh, uh, so if you type PyRun, you can uh, run Python code. Uh, uh, pretty simple. So you can do a one-liner. Uh, it's just a uh, it's just a Python code using exec. So you can uh, write full programs if you do it line by line by doing PyRun like a Pyron import OS, then you can do Pyron OS dot system, well, OS dot, you know, whatever, get CWD. Uh, and that would, uh, that, uh, would, that that returned it to, I didn't have a variable there, so it didn't do anything. So um, I also have this uh, TV bug, and what it does is when you touch the screen, it'll output the touch points, um, but only not when you're in the terminal, because it'd be really hard to do anything in here. So you can also exit and, um, Go back to the main thing, and I'm gonna swap the window that I'm sharing. Uh, hold on. Okay, we have to. Okay. We also have to keep moving so we get to everybody else. So that's you want to come next week? Yeah, that's okay, I'll come by next week and yeah, more. How about you come back and each time you come back, you show one of the apps you made on this? Yeah, I can do that. All okay, right. cool. That's pretty cool. And you're doing exactly what we thought some folks would do at the Pi Portal, which is make their own little computer operating system. So good work on that. Yeah. Yes, amazing. Right. And uh, as always, just have your folks email support at Adafruit if you want a sticker. Yep. Well. Okay, okay, next right. up. Thanks, Jim. Okay. Sped well. Get ready. You're up.
Hey, uh, I actually was intending to come in with something new I built, but uh, circumstances intervened. Uh, this is my bike helmet, including that's a camera on the side. I, I like the format of this style of camera better than um, yeah your, your typical GoPro because I can mount it on the side and it's yeah. you can adjust it so it stays level. Unfortunately, this thing is going on 10 years old, and the uh, power button that's recessed here uh, underneath the waterproof cover uh, wound up uh, coming off of the circuit board it was soldered to. So I actually spent uh, my project time this weekend disassembling this thing and uh, getting that soldered back. It took two tries since the first time I worked on it. It was uh, I tried to leave as much of it in place as possible, which didn't hold, and I actually had to pull the circuit boards out of it solder it back in uh and then reassemble the whole thing and just before i came on the show i realized i didn't take a single picture of it disassembled which would have been you're nice so, for you're a, so focused uh, on fixing it but you got it working and that's what it's but all yes about. so yeah i guess since it's uh, old enough it counts as retro computing it looks but, retro. Uh, I wish you know, like a Mac Classic as your main computer yeah. well congrats because it's better yeah, than it's that. it's uh one of one of my fleet is that SE30? Yeah. What is that? That's, uh, that's an SE. I had an SE30, uh, but that recently stopped working. I turned it over to somebody who would have the time to restore it. SE30s are pretty right. sweet machines. Well, yeah, it was, a, it was easily the best computer for its time. And okay, you got floppy disks too. All right, well, you're set. Come by and show us. Maybe show us your, your old computers or something next time. Cool. Yeah, and also email support at Adafruit, and we will send you out an SE non show tell sticker. It's vinyl. You can put on your helmet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next right. up, uh, Alvaro. Hello, welcome. Hey, everyone. Um, I was going to show actually my uh, Bradley keyboard, but something else happened. So I <laughs> wanted to actually show this beautiful thing. Oh, okay. So um, we're running on a, on a National Geographic, um, what is called an, an Open Explorer. So if anyone wants one of these, of course, you, you can buy it. It's part of the Arrow, Open ROV project. But um, we actually got this because we're doing that open uh, explorer from National Geographic. So if anyone wants one of these, uh, you only need to promise that you're going to use it for research. So this one is actually going to Cocos Island in uh, about a month from today. Um, so yeah, that, that's uh, probably about it. And this is my pie bad, bad, batch from Yay. Uh, about, nice a, about a week ago. I was in a, in a conference called Concitas. So that's about it. Thank you. Well, um, email support at Adafruit, and we'll send you a show and tell sticker. And keep coming back. Um, I saw some of your projects before, so keep keep coming back. And we would very much like to see that Braille keyboard as well. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Thank you. Next Thank you. Up. Next right. up, Christoph. Chris, you're up, and keep it to two minutes, and we'll okay. get everybody tonight. You are me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, first, um, for my robots. Uh, I um, I conceived the integrate secret. Okay. So uh, sol sol soldering uh, time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I present uh, two uh, wearable uh, prototypes. The first, uh, my jacket. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, I use some. Uh, Conductive fabric? Yes. Okay. Here. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. With capacitive touch and it lights up. Yes. Great. Uh, no, no microcontroller. Ah. On, only uh, two resistance and uh, capa uh, capacitor. Old style, original okay. capacitive touch. Okay. The first, pro the second, uh, wearable. Jacket. Nice. Jean jacket. Yes. Cool. Yeah, they're strong. It's good to, it's easy to attach things to a jean jacket. You can, yes. you can sew things on. Brodery uh, by uh, my uh, girlfriend. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, I don't uh, cite uh, the mark of the uh, MP3 player. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, con conductive fabrics. Yeah. The controller of the show you yeah. is here mm -hmm. okay uh, and now uh, I uh, I solder uh, uh, I uh, I hope you can listen mm. 
my shoulder, uh, I make uh, a transfer because uh, there is a... Oh, a headphone output, yeah. Headphone, uh, but uh, I make uh, a speaker. Okay. A speaker to uh, to to avoid you to to hear. So okay. uh, I connect. I connect now. Mm -hmm. So you manage the the speaker. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give you the 30 second warning because we have to. Yes. Yes. Switch to okay, try our it. next show and get set up for that. All right. Sorry, yeah. but, uh, no, yes. we see it. we're almost done. Can you hear? Yep. So you have backward, forward, and stop. Uh... This is audio controller jacket. Yes. Cool. With, right. uh, yeah, that's great. The embroidery is beautiful. With uh, this one uh, is a uh, uh, wire, wire, yeah. conductive wire. Con conductive fabric, a conductive yeah. wire so, thread. If you want a sticker, email sportedatafruit.com and we will send you out a show and sell stickers. Thank you so much, Chris. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Beautiful stuff. And that's our show for this week. Uh, thank you, everybody. We're here every single week, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks for making this the best 23 Sorry, 25 minutes. 25 minutes of our week every single week. We will see everybody on Ask an Engineer in just a couple of minutes. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.